Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Now, if you haven't been watching, we've been working on this cool 1963 Williams Jumpin' Jacks pinball machine. And we filmed one video already of us uh, cleaning all the switches and working through all the electronics. We haven't actually got it to play yet, but we did clean everything, right? And uh, it, whenever we started a game, it had like 10 points stuck on somewhere and something. And we think that might be because the play field is so uh, abandoned, right? So you've got stuff where like the rubber rings have melted and there's probably a switch stuck somewhere or something that's making the 10 points uh, stay on. So I, it looks like they've even nailed a broken rubber ring to the, to the, uh, to the, the wall there. So it needs. We need to work through the play field, and then we're. I'm also going to try to fix up some of this wear down here at the bottom. So we're going to see if that's if we're able to pull that off. Uh, so in this video, we're going to start working on the play field. But if you haven't seen the first one, what are you waiting for? Go watch it first. You don't want to start in the middle, right? Uh, but we're going to get into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the tripod up, and uh, we'll uh, in fast speed, of course, we'll uh, we'll work through and take everything off the play field real quick. So uh, whenever we do that, uh, we'll come back whenever it's all off and we can start cleaning it. And after we clean it, we can paint it. And after we paint it, we can wax it. And after we wax it, we can put it all back together, right? So the first thing we have to do, though, is start pulling stuff off this play field. Right, so we got everything off of it. Look, the uh, official name was Jumping Jacks, not Jumping Jacks. Um, it's actually in very good shape, I would consider it. So let's look up here. There, of course, there's a bad ball trail there, but that's not that big of a deal. It's on everything. That'll clean up nicely. A little bit of wear right there. No big deal. A little bit of wear there. All of the art is pretty much intact. You've got wear on the uh, the two metal drop targets, but that's pretty common, you know. Any drop target is going to get a line worn on it like that. Um, and yeah, so there's no, really nowhere except for here where it's dragging, and I've ordered a flipper rebuild kit to fix that. Basically, new bushings would fix it, but I ordered all that stuff. Um, and so it started eating up a little bit of this paint here. I'm going to try to add that back in. I'm going to try to clean this up and add it back in, and maybe a little bit of this red. So I've got white, black, red, and blue here that I'm going to touch up just a little bit, just in that area, and try to match it as, as well as I can. Um, and I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. Make it look better than it does, I believe. 
but mainly we just need to clean it. So what I'm going to oh, you got a little bit of wear here, but I'm going to leave that, I think. A little bit of wear there. If I get a perfect match for the white, I might try to touch that up. Um, but I don't want to do too much because it's not too bad. So if it's got a little bit of wear, I just leave it. But, you know, this is a little, a little over the line. I kind of got to do something with it. Um, but we're looking pretty good. Cool machine. It's got like a weird uh, theme, but it's pretty sweet. So this thing is uh, 57 years old. What do you think about that? Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to get some Magic Eraser and some uh, 409 and just spray this sucker down and lightly go over it with the Magic Eraser. If you go too heavy with Magic Eraser, it's almost like sandpaper. So you don't want to do that, but you kind of need it to get all of this dirt off. I mean, it's pretty filthy. Like this, that's just dirt. The reason it has a defined line is because that's the, where the ball can go. This was also exposed, but the ball can't touch it because of... Because it's round. <laughs> um, so it's pretty filthy. So I'm going to scrub it down a little bit. Get it nice and clean. And then we can look about possibly painting this back in. So this is what we're starting with. I'm going to clean it up. And that's what it looks like after we cleaned it up. Has some issues, obviously. Uh, I took one of the flippers off. I couldn't get the other flipper off because the uh, stud is broke on it, so I'm going to have to cut it off, but I'm not going to do that tonight. We'll mess with that tomorrow. Uh, but I do want to get started on this paint-by-numbers scheme here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at a picture of it online and figure out how these arcs are supposed to go. I think I can kind of tell, but I'm going to look at a picture to make sure I've got that right. And then I'm going to ink the lines back in with a paint pen. So I'm using latex paint and then at, whenever we're done with all of the paint touch-ups we will uh, clear coat it and uh, lock them in. But latex is good to use because you can wipe it off if you make a mistake. So I'm going to look at a picture online and see how, exactly how that's supposed to look and then I'm going to draw the lines back in. There's just a few missing there um, and we'll work off of that. Okay so this is what I ended up with once I ink the little arcs back in. I couldn't make it just like this one because the, the, if you look, basically the artwork is shifted ever so slightly this way, just barely. So you would think that the flippers would hit that blue mark in the same spot, but they don't. So you see how that is a little bit wider than that. It's because the art's all shifted that way, just barely. So my whole point is the tip of this one it just barely covers the black line, but the tip on this one actually goes over the black line. But I think I've got it. I think I've got it right. Where they'll be even. The flippers are just not. Um, the registration of the arch slightly off. But that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to make it look a little better, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is try to mix up uh, some blue that comes anywhere near matching that. So the way I do that is I have an entire box of little paints. And so I'm going to pull out all my blue ones and mix together a concoction that's just slightly lighter than the paint on the playfield. And then when it dries, it'll dry the color of the paint on the playfield. Simple as that, folks. So let me dig through and work my magic, and I'll show you what I come up with. All right. What do you think? It's still wet. I think it's pretty decent. So what I did was I just repainted the two swoops. So if you're a little bit off, nobody will ever know. So I used some of this true blue. And then I added a little bit of this cerulean blue to calm it down a little bit. Because that one's awful bright. And then once I got it, I put a little dab on there and it looked too blue. It was too true blue. And it looked like the paint on the playfield was a little more towards the purple spectrum. So I added a little bit of the purple. Came up with that and painted it in. What do you think? Now I didn't fill in the, uh, the basically the wood is a little lower there because the, the uh, play field, the flipper had uh, ate through some of the wood. I didn't fill that in. 
and I'm not going to. You can, though, if you're doing it on yours. It just it takes quite a while, and I don't have the time or the patience or the skill to do it on this machine that I'm going to sell. So, But you can do it on yours. So next I need to do some white, and I need to do some red. And uh, didn't I say yellow earlier? No, white, red, and black. That's the only thing left. All right, so white and red. So uh, the white is always kind of tricky. Let me try the red first, just so we can wait on the white. All right, reds are very tough to do because once you take a red and you put any on acrylics, once you take a red and you put any other color in it, it doesn't look quite so red anymore. So you can't take like a red and put like a little bit of white in it and now it's a little bit softer red. No, now you have a, a pink, right? If you take a red and you put a little bit of orange in it, it doesn't make it like a little, a little bit different hue of red. It makes it look like a mix of red and orange, right? So it's just, if you don't have a red out of the bottle that's perfect, it's hard to get the mix right. But with that said, what do you think? So that looks red, but it's actually kind of an orange. Red screwdriver. You see what I'm saying? It's not really red, it's kind of an orange. But it's a red orange, it's like a tomato red. Right? Very tough to match reds. So, I got as close as I could and I repainted that area there. You see how it's not quite as vibrant though? All of this I didn't repaint, so it's... But it's pretty good. So you look for places where you can stop. It's still wet too, that's why it looks a little weird in a couple places. Um, you look for areas where you can stop and not paint past that. Like another line that you can run up against. But a lot of people would never know I repainted that. So last but not least, I need to find something for this white to make it look a little better and uh, paint a little bit of it back in. So uh, I have a bunch of different colors. Now you run into the same problem there. That's not really white. It looks white, but it's not. So here's a business card. Now do you think it's white? <laughs> you know? It's nowhere near white. It's kind of yellow, really, you know? So it's like a cream, off, like a really off white. So something like a buttermilk or something um, would be it. And it's kind of like that with everything. So like here's one of the old rings. So you would think they're white rubber rings. No, they're nowhere near white. So uh, it's kind of like a buttermilk color. So you don't really need white. So I've got like whitewash. It's very white. That's business card white. You know, <laughs> that's too white. And then I've got snow white. Eh, it's a little bit more of a cream than the business card. Uh, and then I've got something like buttermilk. Isn't that a little closer to what we're looking for, <laughs> right? So the buttermilk looks pretty dead on to me, but it's the, the problem that you always run into is that once when you put that buttermilk on there, it will look real clean and vivid. So it's it's tough. We might end up just repainting the whole thing, the whole swoosh. So I'll check with the buttermilk. I think I've got a light buttermilk too. Yeah, a light buttermilk. Hmm, definitely still the buttermilk. All right, so I'll mess around with it and see what I can come up with. Okay, folks, so we painted, I, I just used the buttermilk. It's a little bit too bright because it's a little bit too clean. But whenever I hit it with the uh, clear coat, it'll, uh, it'll darken it up a little bit. So clear coat, I always just use a uh, rattle can clear coat, you know, um, just Rust-Oleum or whatever, Krylon. Um, you can do it a hundred different ways. You can do it a lot, much better ways than that. But uh, 
That's what we usually do. We, and we just spot clear it. So I'll just coat this area here that I've painted and I'll try to make it follow kind of some of the lines. So maybe I'll paint up this way or something. And if you use like a satin, it kind of blends in. Um, and then you wax, 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 wax it. If you don't clear it, you can't wax it. The wax will just take the uh, paint right off. If you get the paint wet, it'll come right off. So, also whenever you clear it, it will darken up all of this here where the uh, varnish has uh, worn away. So that'll darken up and you won't see that as much anymore. Um, yeah, looking pretty good. Okay, so I'll put some clear on it. We'll let it dry overnight and then tomorrow we'll put the, uh, we'll put the wax on it and see how she turns out. Alright folks, so these are the plastics off the play field, and they're all bent up by heat, right? And this one even has a bunch of, see that's kind of, it's got kind of a melted appearance. So what I've done is I cleaned them up as good as I could, um, and I'm going to try to s smash them back flat, <laughs> right? So Matt's saying he doesn't think it can work. Matt doesn't know what he's talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat them up with this heat gun. And when I see them start trying to like melt a little, just a little bit, you got to be careful. You go too much, you're going to ruin them. You're damn right I'm using a heat gun. I'd use a flame torch if I had one. 
So you heat it up a little bit, and whenever they start to melt a little bit, I'm going to slide them under this big heavy sheet of glass. Look at this. It, it's the uh, bezel off a monitor on an arcade game. So we're going to see if it works, just to prove Matt wrong. Thinks he's right. I wonder if you can heat it through the glass. Probably, but I'm, I don't want to get the glass too hot. Might shatter. <laughs> So you just get on it, and whenever it starts slip sliding away, now Matt wants to help. He told me before he didn't think it would work. <laughs> oh, You gotta be careful, it'll, it'll, it will melt. It'll start bubbling. All right, Matt, go for it. Okay, maybe it does help a little bit. Help a little bit, he says. Mm -hmm. So now I'm talking in this guy's voice. <laughs> help a little bit, he says. <laughs> well, see, these are thin. The ones I tried were like... Oh, it was different it when was you different. tried it. Yeah. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, I was doing yeah you're not wrong. It was just <laughs> different back then. This is baby plastic. Like you mean 1963? These are the cool ones, man. These are older than you. These are 57. You can only have one side that's a thin. I don't think they're quite that thin. <laughs> Matt's here hanging out, watching us fix our pinball machine. I wonder how long we got to wait. That's Probably cool. I'm gonna wait a little longer, <laughs> just in case, because you were wrong about that other time. <laughs> All right, we're go I'm gonna let it sit for three or four minutes. All right. A mm. little bit of paint loss on the glass. Thanks, Matt. Before and after. Thanks a lot, Matt. It is pretty flat, though. I think that's usable. It's going to have to be usable since you can't get other ones. I need another one of these. Do what? Have to get you another piece of glass. Or a scraper. <laughs> this is a piece of glass. What the hell? You're not giving me solutions that help. Matt's suggesting that the problem is I'm using this glass instead of this glass. Come on, Matt. This is tempered glass. It, that couldn't possibly make a difference. I think it's because the paint's just so old. It's probably going to stick to anything. Well, maybe we... I can't do it upside down, though, because it, it, like, it'll burn the paint. It's, We're going to try it. This is a uh, screen printed. Uh-huh. We're going to go for it again, Matt. Try holding it in your hand. I don't have flat hands. What the hell are you accusing me of? I have nice hands. Posable thumbs and all that. All right, get ready, Matt. Don't do it yet. When you start seeing it. Okay, go for it. I'll bet that's what's messing up the paint. You're smashing it like that. Uh, it's supposed to be a careful set down. You went kind of like at an angle. All right, I think that's going to get it, people. So we're going to go through all of them, and that should fix all of our plastics.
came out pretty good, I think. Check it out. I love these old, these old school machines like this, the really old ones. It's like from a different time. None of this exists anymore. <laughs> the only thing left is this damn pinball machine. See, it came out pretty good. I had to repaint the little guys. I won't get too close. Spare myself the criticism. Let's just say I got them looking... Pretty snazzy. The hardest part was this uh, big rubber ring, as you saw in the video. I put a five and a half on there. I don't know what size it's supposed to be, but I don't think you can order one bigger than a five and a half. I've, I've, I keep in stock kind of all of them, and uh, I don't have that was the biggest one I had, and I, I usually buy everything they have, so I don't, I don't think you can get any bigger than that. It stretches it a little thin, but that's how the one was that was on there too. And the one that was on it wasn't marked, so I don't know what size it was. We ordered new pop bumper caps from Pinball Resource. They rock. And you can see that the plastics came out pretty good. They still look worn, but they're not all wavy anymore. They're nice and flat like they're supposed to be. So that, uh, that worked out pretty good. And my touch-up paint I had almost forgotten about. <laughs> It's not perfect. If you've, if you've never uh, heard me talk about that, we had a guy that used to come in the store, and this is what he used to say all the time. It's not horrible. Which is insinuating that it's close to horrible, right? So if I go, it's not perfect, it's begging the, the, the supposition that I'm about to say, but it's damn close to perfect. So it's not perfect. And the back glass, I haven't even put new bulbs in yet, but it's looking pretty good already. So there you go, folks. I would play it for you, but I can't yet. It doesn't do anything. When you hit start, let's see how many credits have I got. I have 19 credits. Let's see if it subtracts one when I hit start. It does not. So it's not working yet, folks. Or I'd play it for you. Hmm, that's all I can do. All I can do is let you look at it. So what fun are they if you can't play them, right? Well, that's why we'll need another video. So we're going to do another video of us fixing the freaking thing. <laughs> Finally getting it where it plays. We did a video where we cleaned all of the switches and the stepper units and the relays, but I missed something because it ain't starting. Do you think I can fix it? Do you think it's even possible? I got the, I rebuilt the flippers, by the way. I got them pretty, you know, with flippers, you've got different things you can do. Some people sag them like that. It makes them look a little limp. I don't usually do that. And uh, so I usually put them a little farther up like they are kind of now. But the problem you run into there is it, it makes the area in the middle smaller so that you can hit it more often. But the problem you run into is it makes the wide shots harder. So it would be hard to make that shot, but is that really a shot anyway? You know? So on a play field like this, definitely, especially with those little two inch stunners. Um, so we'll see how it plays though once I get it to actually run. But I think it turned out pretty good. So leave your comments below, let us know what you think. Hmm, the touch up there, I mean, it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. Let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And uh, while you're at it, check out our brother channel, my brother Donnie. He is literally my brother Donnie. He and I are over there doing all kinds of crazy stuff lately. There's three brothers, Joey, I'm Ronnie, and he's Donnie. And uh, uh, Donnie is the craziest of the three of us, so his channel is uh, just getting started, but it's already had some real doozies. So he talked me into working on a mobile home with him. So we bought an old mobile home that was completely destroyed. He was like, oh, it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's pretty good. The thing was destroyed. Destroyed, right? Of course, I didn't figure that out. Till he'd already spent our money. So we had to fix it. But we fixed it up. And we've been filming all of that. Pretty fun. He does a lot of farm videos, small engine repair. And he just bought a 1988 
uh, Chevrolet Silverado C30 uh, uh, one ton pickup <laughs> with a 454 in it and he's working on it right now it's pretty cool to watch so it has nothing to do with arcade games but check it out it's called my brother Donnie I make a lot of cameos over there you might enjoy at least in voice right so check that out. And also down below, you will see a link to Amazon. If you click the Amazon link, that takes you just to the regular Amazon site. And you, if you're planning on buying something, uh, just buy it after you click our link. I don't mean click our link and go sign up for our version of Amazon. No, no, no. Go to Amazon. But before you go there, instead of typing Amazon.com, click our link. That easy. By doing that, it tells Amazon that we sent you there. We were the place you were before you went to Amazon, and they give us some of their money for doing it. Can you believe that? They've been very generous to us. So uh, that's the Amazon Associates program. So it's pretty cool. If you click the link before you buy something on Amazon, it gives us some of Amazon's money, and it doesn't raise your prices. You don't have to sign up for anything or any crap like that. Couldn't be easier to do. And a lot of people have been doing that, so we appreciate it to everyone who has been doing that. The other day, somebody bought an air conditioner on there because, you know, it's getting hot. And they clicked the link before they did, and uh, Amazon sent us, sent us some of their profit on it. We appreciate that. But you don't have to buy anything big. If you Oh, the other day, somebody bought a screwdriver on there. <laughs> so we did a video about working on a Pac-Man, and I was saying, yeah, use a little flathead screwdriver. Somebody went on Amazon and bought a little flathead screwdriver. Good for you, whoever that was. It's like a special one for pulling chips or something, but kind of looked like a flathead screwdriver to me. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. That's pretty fun. It's kind of neat seeing what people uh, purchase. And it doesn't tell us who's buying anything or anybody's name or anything. So we don't have any. It's all anonymous and kind of fun. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Leave your comments below. And we will see you on the next video when we finally get this thing up and running. Cannot wait.